What's up everybody, Mr. J here, and this is part two of ANP2 week six review where we are talking about immunity and the immune system. And I want to say right off the bat that this is a complex process. This is very complex, highly regulated. Um, and so if you ever take an immunology course, it's incredibly detailed and confusing, but I'm going to do my best to simplify basically everything you need to know so that you can understand those little, uh, just slight differences in different courses, okay? So immune system, what is it? Well, first off, by definition, it's just your body's protection from pathogens, which are just disease-causing agents or microorganisms. So things like bacteria, things like protozoans, uh, things like viruses, parasites, anything that could cause you harm or get you sick is considered a pathogen. So we need to protect our bodies from that. So the way we do it is through two main sort of responses. We have an innate response, which will be our first and second lines of defense. But then we will have our adaptive, which is our third line of defense. And this one really gets complex, but it's also the most fascinating. So we're going to get into that in detail in a bit. Well, let's talk about the comparing and contrasting of the two. So first off, the innate is very um, fast. So this occurs constantly, very quickly, whereas the adaptive is going to be slower but it's also, once it is triggered and it goes through to completion, it'll be primed for the next infection, okay? So we'll talk about that a little bit. The innate system is nonspecific, so it will just basically destroy, eat any sort of pathogen that comes in random willy-nilly. However, the adaptive is incredibly specific to the specific uh, tag on that microorganism called an antigen. Okay, so the adaptive is going to be very specific. And then lastly, just so I don't screw it up on my paper, um, the last thing that will be innate is that it does not have a memory. So there's no memory to the innate system, whereas the adaptive will have uh, memory capability. So it'll be able to remember previous infections and respond in that primed manner. It's ready to act um, based upon the memory that it has. So let me give you a couple examples of the innate system. Uh, then I'll talk about white blood cells for a second, and then we're really going to hop into the adaptive immune system today. So your innate system. Uh, these are things like, here, let me just give you some examples. Your skin, your mucous membranes, um, phagocytes, so uh, eater cells, antimicrobial proteins, um, acids in your stomach. All the things that are just naturally there just waiting to basically kill any microorganism is considered innate. Okay, so the two examples that I gave in class were the complement cascade and then interferons. Let me walk through these quickly. The complement cascade is a group of 20 proteins that are circulating through your blood at any moment in time. Okay, and these proteins will activate if there is an infection. So if it detects some sort of foreign agent, maybe a toxin, maybe a virus, if it notices that, it will bind to those uh, antigens or those foreign agents and do one of three things. The first is it can act activate what's called a membrane uh, attack complex, which is basically this complex of proteins that will coagulate on top of the bacteria, for example, and just poke holes in the membrane. Okay, so that bacteria will be tagged with those things, and then all of a sudden, boom, it po pokes holes in the membrane, bacteria lyses, and it dies. So that's very helpful. Second thing that could happen is inflammation, okay? So inflammatory chemicals will be secreted from these uh, protein complement, uh, the complement cascade, and then there will be inflammatory molecules that basically stimulate a further immune response. And then lastly, opsonization. Opsonization is molecular tagging. And these proteins will basically put a tag on like a virus or a bacteria, and it will tag it for destruction. Okay, specifically, it's uh, tagging it for eating by macrophages. So big eater cells, they will see those tags on top of those microorganisms and engulf them and eat them. Okay, so that's like tagging them for destruction. Lastly, this one's probably my favorite. It's really cool. There are things called interferons. So let's say that one of your cells gets infected with a virus. Okay, so this is a viral infection of one of your cells. Your cell amazingly enough, will detect that it's become infected with the virus and it's going to be like, I'm dead, this is over. So what it will do 
it's going to secrete these uh, basically chemicals to tell neighboring cells like, hey, I'm infected with the virus. Start making antiviral proteins. So say like this cell gets infected with a virus, so now there's a bunch of virus inside of this cell, and there's neighboring cells nearby it. And it's going to send these little molecular signals to say, hey, save yourself, save yourself to these neighboring cells. And these neighboring cells are then going to secrete their own proteins, maybe put them on their membrane, maybe make them inside. And these are all the antiviral proteins so that if those viruses eventually get out, so say these viruses kill this cell and get out, they'll be blocked by these antiviral proteins. So it's almost like the cell that got infected is communicating with its neighbors and basically saying, hey, prepare for the worst. Okay, prepare for the worst. There are viruses here, so make your antiviral protein so you don't get infected, so you don't die like me. Okay, so it's a very selfless act by this, by this guy. Okay, so that is interferons. Awesome. Now, I want to go through, before we get into the adaptive immune system, I want to go through the five white blood cell types that we'll talk about. Those five can be remembered by the mnemonic, never let monkeys eat bananas. And this is actually... Um, in order based upon how prevalent they are. So the top will be the most prevalent and the bottom will be the least prevalent. So the five white blood cells are the neutrophils, the lymphocytes, and these are our big players that we're gonna talk about in the adaptive immune system. Monocytes, eosinophils, and finally, basophils. So everything that is not a lymphocyte could be considered a part of the innate immune system. So the neutrophils, the monocytes, the eosinophils, and the basophils will all be cell types a part of the innate immune system. The lymphocytes will be a part of the adaptive immune system, which we're going to talk about at length here in a second. So let me delineate a couple things about these white blood cells. First off, they're also termed leukocyte. So if you hear of a leukocyte, it means white cell. All of these are leukocytes, okay? But then they have different categories. So lymphocytes, there's multiple lymphocytes. Um, and you can delineate a couple of these guys. We're just going to keep them as is. So let me tell you a couple things that they do. The neutrophils are your standard uh, macrophages. So they're going to basically come and eat any sort of foreign agent. Okay, so like I said earlier, it's nonspecific, it's fast. These neutrophils will just basically see a bacteria, eat it. Okay, it's a good thing. They help uh, start that first um, wave of protection against infection. The monocytes, monocytes I like to think of as the molecular mops, because they come in to... Uh, infected areas to damaged areas, and they kind of like to clean up just little proteins here and there, okay? So they're like mini macrophages, just kind of cleaning up the area. Eosinophils starts with an E. They deal with allergies, okay? So allergies uh, are associated with eosinophils. So allergies, um, that's going to stimulate histamines uh, to be um, produced by these eosinophils, and also parasitic infections. So if you have a parasite, your eosinophil count will be skyrocketing. And then lastly, basophils it starts with a B. So I think burning, which is inflammation. So basophils are going to secrete a lot of inflammatory chemicals to basically stimulate further immune responses. Anytime you have inflammation of a tissue, it's going to stimulate white blood cells to come to the area to basically prepare for battle. Um, so those are the white blood cells. We're going to talk about the lymphocytes, that segment of white blood cells. But before we get into that, I gave you this helpful little <clears throat> sheet that walks through both the innate immune system, basically the first line of defense being your skin, your mucous membranes, um, and then secondly will be those internal defenses that are still innate. They're nonspecific, they're fast. Things like uh, antimicrobial proteins on your skin, things like fever and inflammation, uh, natural killer cells I won't talk about at length, but then phagocytes like we talked about with the neutrophils. So these are all part of your innate defense. Now, your innate defense can only do so much, and most of the time it is enough. Okay, So the innate defense will fight off the infection and you will not get sick. However, if you have a lot of infection, say a ton of viruses pouring into your bloodstream, 
Now you need to call in the special operations unit, which will be the lymphocytes. So let's begin to our talk on the innate immune system. Let me pause so I can get this ready. All right, it's like magic. We're gonna talk about the lymphocytes. There's two branches of lymphocytes that we'll talk about, um, and they will be the T and the B cells. In a textbook, you would also see that the natural killer cells are also a type of lymphocyte. And that's part of the um, innate immune system. And I wrote that wrong. This is adaptive. Good catch, Mr. Jackson. So this is the adaptive immune system dealing with lymphocytes. And a lymphocyte, a natural killer cell is technically a lymphocyte. So I'm just going to omit it because we're going to talk about the B and the T cells. Because as you can see on your little sheet, the adaptive defense is done by your B cells and your T cells. And primarily in this video, I'm going to talk about the T cells. Okay, so I've got a PowerPoint I'm going to use here in a second. When we hear T cells, there's going to be two different segments. There's either going to be the helper T cells or the cytotoxic T cells. Helper T cells have a CD4 uh, antigen, and the cytotoxic T cells have a CD8 antigen, and they're going to act a little differently. Whereas the B cells, B cells make antibodies, which we'll talk about next week, um, that are going to kind of tag antigens and have a more specific response to infections. Um, and there's going to be two types, the plasma B cells, which actually make the antibodies. And then we're going to talk about memory B cells that will remember how to make the antibodies should another infection occur that's the same uh, pathogen. Okay? Well, we're going to talk about T cells. So let's go to your visual that I gave you and that has this diagram. I'm going to have to raise my computer. There we go. Okay, so this is our first uh, kind of page that I showed you guys. And this is going to be dealing with your helper T, uh, sorry, your cytotoxic T cells. Okay, so let me set the stage for you. What you see right now is a cell, is a cell that just got infected by a bacteria, by a, a virus or something along those lines. And one of the proteins, one of those proteins that came from the bacteria or the virus or whatever it is, is now embedded inside of the cell. Well, what this cell will do, what all of your cells will do is this process. Okay, so watch this. That antigen, that protein or fragments of the protein, it works the same way, will eventually get processed to get shown on the outside of this infected cell. How does it do that? Well, think about it this way. The antigen from that uh, pathogen is like the flag. And all of your cells are able to make what's called MHC class one flag holders, okay? MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. Major Histocompatibility Complex, okay? It's just something that's compatible with basically any flag, okay? so. We take that flag, the antigen, from the pathogen, we stick it into our flag holder, and we hold it outside of the cell. Okay, so look at this part. When we put that flag from the pathogen onto our flag holder, it stimulates cell destruction. The way it stimulates cell destruction is this. Check this out. Look at the left side, okay? So on the left side, I've got my virally infected cell that just got infected, right? It's got its MHC class 1 with the peptide, that's the antigen, the flag. And what will happen is a cytotoxic T cell will come and bind to that antigen and MHC class 1 kind of coagulant. Uh, it's a bad word for it. Uh, I'll just say antigen, combined antigen complex. And since it is a cytocell toxic uh, T cell, it will basically kill that virally infected cell. Okay, so what the cell did was it basically realized I'm getting infected and I'm going to put my put the antigen out for the cytotoxic T cell to see this, and the cytotoxic T cell will basically kill that cell, and also it will cause more proliferation of T cells because hey, we have an infection, this is an issue, so we need to mount a response. So that is through the MHC class one process, okay? We had a virally infected or a mutated cell, like in cancer cells, this happens the same way. I won't talk about that too much. Um, but it'll basically trigger itself, wave that flag of bacteria or pathogen outside of it, 
to get killed by the CD8, the cytotoxic T cell. Awesome. Let's move on to a different situation. <clears throat> now, this is the MHC2, and this is how antigens are processed in this one. In this case, this is going to be what's called a professional, uh, or sorry, an a professional antigen presenting cell. A professional antigen prevent, uh, presenting cell. Let me actually write this. Hopefully it shows up decently. I'm going to pause it. So professional antigen presenting cells are cells that actually engulf pathogens or their antigens on their own accord. So they decide, hey, I'm going to eat this bacteria, this pathogen, and I'm going to take its antigen, and I'm going to bind it to my MHC class 2 molecule. MHC class 2 is still like the flag holder. Antigen is still the flag, but in this case, this is a professional cell. It's not going to die. It's not like it got infected. It actively ate that cell, okay? And now it's going to present that flag, remember, the flag, the antigen from the pathogen, and it is going to stimulate immune cells. Specifically, it's going to stimulate T helper cells, which is going to be our CD4 cells, T helper cells. So in this case, if I go back to my picture that I just had, now we're talking professional antigen presenting cells. It has our MHC class 2. It's got our antigen from our bacteria, pathogen, whatever it is. And this T helper cell is going to bind to that complex. And amazingly, amazingly, this T helper cell will then proliferate. So it's going to divide like crazy, making more and more and more T helper cells that are basically um, going to start binding to all these MHC2 complexes, stimulating an immune response. And eventually, it's going to stimulate B cells <clears throat> to start producing antibodies, which will basically either tag those antigens from bacteria, from the pathogens for destruction. It will neutralize those antigens. Um, it'll basically mount an even stronger and more specific immune response to those specific pathogens and their specific antigens. And that's what we're going to talk about a little more on Tuesday. But remember, the two differences between MHC1 and MHC2. In MHC1, all of your body cells have it. All of your body cells have that flagpole. So let me just go back so we don't get confused. <clears throat> all of your body cells have MHC1. So if all of your body cells have MHC1, anytime they are going to be uh, infected, they will take that antigen, put it into the flagpole, and basically <clears throat> tell, them, tell the cytotoxic T cells to kill them, to self-sacrifice them. Whereas the MHC2 is only in those professional antigen presenter cells. And it is engulfing that antigen or that pathogen on its own accord. It won't die, but it will stimulate the T helper cells to then stimulate the immune response. So that's the big difference between the two. Um, so again, I had you take this sheet, which will be helpful if you want to screenshot it here. And I also gave you those two other sheets that I just put on the board with the MHC1 self-sacrificing cell. And then the, whoops, <laughs> I flipped it upside down, the MHC2. So again, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. This is a very complex system. So hopefully we laid it out properly. Um, and yeah, drop any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, y'all.